Now, I thought the bullying here of British feminist Kelly J. King Minchel by Australia's leftists was bad enough. I mean, bullying a woman, how low can you get? I mean, seriously. And I thought the left hated that kind of thing, you know, misogyny, blah, blah, blah. But what we saw on Saturday in New Zealand, on a New Zealand leg of her Let Women Speak tour was even worse. I mean, it was just horrific. And I've got New Zealand viewers. What is, what's going on in your country? I mean, Keen Minshaw, right? She's that activist fighting to save women's spaces and women's sports and women's identity from the transgender movement. She's trying to save it from the left. And the left say, oh, well, no, you're not compassionate enough, so, right? They're not compassionate enough. So they compassionately monstered her on Saturday and monstered her supporters. Uh, they, well, here they did in Tasmania and they compassionately stole a microphone in Melbourne and Senator Lydia Thorpe compassionately fought with security guards to stop her speaking in Canada. But then the left in New Zealand, they showed her even more compassion. They attacked her with tomato sauce as security brought her to which she was meant to speak. This is in Auckland. And then a mob, many of them men, actually tore down barricades to get their hands on her. Can you believe this? It is so primitive. Throwing eggs, throwing liquids at her, getting right in her face, threatening violence. Look, that mob of leftists looked like it wanted to kill her. And around her were these female guards, mainly, some men, mainly, but many female guards, trying to save her. <laughs> That is the left's compassion that you just saw. And in fact, one drag queen punched an elderly supporter. Another elderly man was also punched. And an elderly woman was howled down and intimidated as she tried to speak to journalists. Now, not surprisingly, Kim Minchel said she feared for her life from these leftists, the man in compassion. Joining me is broadcaster and commentator Esther Kraku. Esther, this footage of a woman being attacked, mm. threatened, bullying, bullied has now gone around the world. What does it tell you? I mean, it's obviously a very unfortunate and awful situation. Um, but I think what's more telling is how the, this accident, well, incident, has been reported. Um, it's a bit of a litmus test to see where, where many newspapers lean. Uh, so in certain papers like the Daily Mail and the Spectator, they're calling this uh, an attack of a woman's rights activist, um, which is what Rosie Parker identifies as. And But in the papers like The Guardian, they're calling her an anti-trans activist. So it really just shows the dichotomy with how the, the, this incident is being it, is being covered clearly it's a you know the, the height of hypocrisy to say that you're for compassion when you're attacking a woman with eggs and tomato soup for trying to advocate for women's rights but i think the bigger problem is you know tackling this ideology around transgenderism look the standard used to be you know if you have gender dysphoria and you feel a deep uh, disconnection with the, the the sex that you were born with you can go about dressing how you like and you know society will respect you as we always have but then the ideology has moved so far that we now have to affirm that belief in all aspects of public life, which is really uh, infringing on our rights, but also mainly infringing on the rights of women and our safety. So if if you take the ideological uh, extension of this, of this belief that if you identify as the opposite sex, therefore you are, and therefore we must treat you that way in public life, then you're making the argument that biological men can be in women's shelters, for instance, or in women's prisons, like what basically deposed the, the first leader of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon. And it's this absurdity that has really wound up many many parts of society because it's just ideologically incoherent. I think you make a really good point on the litmus test because there's a, another litmus test here, uh, Esther. I have seen, and I haven't read the British papers, right, so you might tell me uh, there's an exception there, but I have seen no prominent leftists look at that and feel shame for what people acting in their, you know, sort of cause have done to a, a lone woman there I have seen none condemn what was done to Keane Minchel. On Twitter, on the contrary, I see hundreds and even thousands of messages of support for this thuggery. The bullying that she endured in Tasmania was backed by a, the, the leader of the Greens Party there. What is happening here? Well, 
they would argue that uh, they are not representative of all leftists and they condemn violence and all of that. But on the flip side, they're also against any movements that go against trans rights. It's really an ideologically based argument now because the the the, the, the threshold, well, the yeah, the threshold has moved from we respect you for choosing what you want to be, but we have to have some certain, certain common sense uh, policies in place in public life. To you must affirm my gender and what I believe that I am, and therefore that must be reflected in all aspects of public life. And to not do that is an attack against my identity. They genuinely believe that this is some sort of borderline genocide against people that identify as trans, which is not the case at all. I mean, there's serious concerns around women's safety. In Scotland, for instance, we had a male rapist, a person who'd raped multiple women, put in a female prison because of the, the ideological extension of this lunacy. And so there's really no way to coherently you know, fight against this other than drawing a line in the sand and saying you can identify how you wish. However, you cannot compel people in public to to go along with what you believe. Exactly. And you certainly cannot, cannot use your feelings to compel how we conduct public policy. It's completely ridiculous. Yeah, well, that's a, such a same position that I can understand why the left has gone from saying you're wrong because of this reason, this reason, this reason, to you're wrong and I'm going to punch you in the face if you repeat it. I mean, it's just so, it's just so barbaric what is happening to the left, you know. Progressive? No, they're regressive. Um, by the way, um, yet another author is now being rewritten, Esther. This time it's Agatha Christie, Queen of the Murder Mystery. I've even read an Agatha Christie book this year. I mean, she still sells. Sensitivity readers, and we've talked about them before, have got to the publisher to change some of the language, like anything referring to race. For instance, in Death on the Nile, Christie has one character say, originally, they come back and stare and stare and their eyes are simply disgusting, so are their noses, and I don't believe I really like children. That's now been changed to, they come back and stare and stare, and I don't believe I really like children. Nothing about disgusting eyes and noses. OK, your response. Well, obviously, we shouldn't be rewriting authors' works because it is their work, they have a right to it. I don't, I don't completely, I'm not against the argument that you raise this during discussions with children, but to, to censor what an author has written is actually quite a nefarious business because now you're saying that this is how we should communicate and this is how the author should have said it and you're really trying to sanitize the public discourse by saying what you feel is acceptable i still don't understand why there is such a thing as a sensitivity reader i would be very curious how to get a job like that because it seems like a fantastic gig if you can get it but i think the <laughs> But I think the, the main issue here is how nefarious this is. You, you're really putting the uh, ability to, to conduct any sort of civil discourse in the hands of very few people that have very strong ideological beliefs. And I don't think that's, you know, that's a recipe for a very civilised society. Honestly, Esther, I mean, the next frontier is, you won't believe this, I think it was in The Guardian, where they said, these sensitivity readers, they're not paid enough. They're not paid enough. I mean, God, if you paid them more, how much more damage would they do? Esther Cracker, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time.